Let's push this burning, it's burning for you. Let's push this burning, it's burning for you. Welcome to another edition of Lens Burning Bush, and I am Len Harvey. Before I bring on my guest for the week, I want to talk about what's really burning my bush. So when you have to have an article come out and explain exactly who the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is for, there may be a problem. And Cillian Brethnock wrote an article on Guitar.com on May the 6th and asked that question. So what is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Right? What is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? And why does it feel so stale in 2022? Well, I have a solution for the people in Cleveland. Just change the name. Like you change the name of your baseball team to the Cleveland Guardians, you can now make it the Music Hall of Fame. Get rid of the rock and roll part. Then we can stop having the conversation on why someone who has never rocked or has never rolled, is getting into the prestigious museum. We can then really get down to the root of the problem, which is we can actually argue over who should actually get in and why some bands can't seem to catch a break. Cillian was quoted in the article that those included on this year's inductee list raised more questions than answers, right? And those that are nominated but not inducted raise even more. And I've always said that, right? So who got in this year, right? You want to know? I'm going to give you the information in case you missed it. Uh, Pat Benatar got in. Okay. Duran Duran. Now, Pat Benatar should have been in a long time ago, just so you know. If Joan Jett got in, she gets in, uh, right? She should have been in the next year. She shouldn't have had to wait. Uh, Duran Duran is a first-time nominee and got in. Eminem, first-time nominee. He is a shoe in I agree with that. The Eurythmics, I can live with that. Now, here's where it starts to get a little bit interesting. Dolly Parton, who didn't even want to get in in the first place because she felt that she didn't have a place. You know, country has their own Hall of Fame, and she has, you know, obviously she's a treasure. I'm not going to argue with that. Dolly Parton should be in. Lionel Richie's another one. Uh, Carly Simon got in. Now, here's something interesting. This is where they're starting to reach now. Judas Priest was on the ballot, but instead will be inducted in the non- performer uh, category for musical excellence. So they didn't get in on the original way they were supposed to get in, so they just threw them in, right? Alongside songwriting and production duo Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, Harry Belafonte got in, and Elizabeth Cotton will be recognized for their Early Influence Award, and Jimmy Iovine and Sylvia Robinson are set to get in also. Now, the 37th annual induction ceremony will be held on November 5th, at the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles and will air on a later date on HBO like it normally does in Sirius XM. So I have one question, right? Big music fan. I love music, and I'm just trying to figure out. Where is Foreigner? Boston. Jethro Tull, who my wife hates, but I think they should be in. Others of note. Blue Oyster Cult. No. Bachman Turner Overdrive. How about Kansas? I mean, come on. No Kansas? Carry on my wayward son is not, Kansas is not in the Hall of Fame. Why are these bands not in? And let's be honest, we all love Judas Priest, and I love the Scream for Vengeance album. I actually still have the vinyl of that album when I was growing up. And congratulations to them for getting in. But really, over Foreigner or any, I mean, they should have, Foreigner should have been in before them. So let me educate a little bit, because I like to do that on this show. To be eligible for induction, artists have had to have their released uh, their first record. They had to release their first record 25 years earlier and have created music whose originality, impact, and influence has changed the course of rock and roll. Now, I would get rid of the rock and roll part and just put music, okay? According to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, or the Music Hall of Fame, as I like to say. Now, you can find out who's in and who's not, and we could debate some more by going to rockhall.com. With that being said, it's time to bring on my guest for the week. She is a multimedia journalist from CBS Radio Network. Let's welcome for the first time the talented Mara Rubin to Lens Burning Bush. And Mara, I'm going to put you on the big screen so we can can chat and people can see you and uh, on the YouTube channel and also on Twitter and Facebook. 
but welcome. It has been a long time since we got a chance to talk. How are it you? has. How long? It's been years. Lots it's of been years. a few years, but of course you haven't aged a bit. I have <laughs> looked like, I look like heck and you are just fantastic. Oh, so. that's too sweet and <laughs> such a lie, but okay. That, uh, thanks for the intro because I kind of felt like I want to like walk on down like for some game show. That was really, really Yeah, let's good. get you, let's get you even more. Here, let's go. There's the lovely <laughs> Mara Rubin. She is, uh, she is a treasure just like Dolly, right? Dolly Parton uh, getting into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, what are your thoughts here? Do we need to change the name? Uh, is it... Uh, because at some point, I mean, even Lionel Richie, we love him, the Commodores, and and then, you know, uh, Easy Like Sunday Morning, and we love all the stuff dancing on the ceiling, but is that really rock and roll or pop? No, I, I kind of agree with you. I mean, I love all them, and God yeah. bless them, and they earn an award somewhere, maybe not rock and roll. I mean, when I think of N Eminem, I think of rap. Hip -hop. Yeah, yeah. hip-hop. When I think of Dolly Parton, like you said, country. Yeah. Um, Lionel Richie, soft rock. I don't yeah. know. Duran I don't even Duran, know if it's soft pop. rock. I, yeah, Duran Duran. Duran and, and my wife Susan loves Duran Duran. She's going to be very excited. She's she was excited when Def Leppard got in, uh, okay. and they should. I mean, but if you look at the kind of more rock and roll. -ish. Yeah, no, okay. exactly. They're they're more rock and roll than than uh, than of course you know, and even Judas Priest is rock and roll. But I like I said, I I'm not even arguing that Judas Priest is a good band. I'm just saying that I don't think they should have been in over Foreigner, Boston. There's there's several bands that should Foreigner. If you here's the deal with Foreigner, and I think what happens is, and this is a, a silly reason that I I like to to give, but the fact that Fleetwood Mac is in the F's and Foreigner is there, I think they get forgotten a lot. If you've ever been to a Foreigner show, and even most recently within the last few years, you actually forget how good they really are. There's like seven songs that were number one or they were around that area. So to me, if I look at it in the baseball or football terms, that if you you transcend greatness and if you're going to have seven songs that are in the top 10 or whatever that, that magical number is, you know, or have, have several albums that are, you know, gold, that should be 25 years you should be in. There shouldn't right. be a... There shouldn't be an, I, I don't know why it's got to be political. Boston, apparently there was a lawsuit or something and they're not probably going to ever get in. I don't know, but. Well, who, who votes? Who, they, how do they get in? Like, is there, is it the peers or is there like some committee of. There's a committee just like they do with the stupid college football playoff, I think. Okay. So the committee is what ruins everything. I think it should just be by their peers because if it's by their peers, then you know that there's certain people like Stevie Winwood is not in the hall of fame, which is ridiculous. Stevie Winwood was in the band traffic. He, he had stuff on his own. I mean, that's another one. It's like you look at, and then some guys get in and you wonder like, why are they in? I mean, I, I think once they started with, um, you know, obviously when run DMC and several others, you had to put Jay Z in and you had to put, uh, uh, I can't think of a couple of names, but you had to put all of them in. Uh, there and Eminem, if they're going to get in, Eminem is is definitely somebody who transcended uh, hip hop for sure. And the Beastie Boys, um, but it, there's a lot of people that are in there. You're wondering. I mean, I, I like Harry Belafonte, and I guess he's transcended. But um, Dale, you know, <laughs> Dale. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I, I just wonder. I mean, obviously Elvis. You look at some of the people, and again, the fact that if you look at the list. Uh, of people that are in the rock and roll or, you know, in the rock and roll hall of fame. And you can go to that, that website that I, that I called out, you know, rock and uh, what was it rockhall.com. So if you go there, you'll see who's in and who's not. And then we can have another discussion on who should be in and who's not. Cause I think that's a great discussion, uh, especially if we change the name, because I think the idea in the beginning, you know, you look at the fifties and you look at, and when they first started, Yes, rock and roll was a name obviously created in the 50s and it it is great, you know. But now, I don't know. I mean, I think well, we're, the whole we're... world is more inclusive now. So maybe rock and roll just is very inclusive. Everybody can come in. I guess so. I guess so, but see, that's I just feel like, you know, if Dolly Parton realizes that she shouldn't be in and 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 I think maybe you, there's a problem, right? Cause, cause I, we love Dolly. She's a, she's Everybody a loves Dolly, yeah. there's nothing, nothing to not like about her. And she's fantastic musician and she should be in the music hall of fame. 
So my new place is the Music Hall of Fame. So Cleveland, you've changed your name. You've changed your baseball team's name to the Guardians. Nobody will ever remember the other team, right, that they had. Uh, the Guardians now is the new the new mm-hmm. team. So we'll just change it. Have you ever have you ever been to the to the Music Hall of Fame? <laughs> I've already I've changed been it. By it at night. I've been to Cleveland, so that's where it is, right? Yeah, it is in so, Cleveland. Yeah. So I, I, I drove by it at night, but we never went. I had a a college roommate who went to Case Western for law school, so I visited visited. So, well, since we're talking about music, I, I want to bring up a sad story. I don't know if you saw, but uh, Naomi Judd. Uh, died and uh, unfortunately, you know, succumbing to the mental illness, which is a is a huge, huge topic. Um, you know, for anything, it's just a shame. And uh, to go with it, she died at the the age of seventy six over uh, last weekend, and it's just a it's just a shame to see people. Uh, you know, like Robin Williams, and uh, you know, it's 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 not a good thing. And and certainly, um, you know, we our thoughts and prayers are out to the to the to the Judd family because that's you know, not uh, not what you want to want to have happen and as long as they they have no more pain anymore right that's the way you, you look at it so um hopefully um things could get better for the judd family uh are you a big tv uh are you are you binging shows these days um it's hard to say i mean i got my standards like i always watch the morning news and then the evening news uh see i stopped I, doing that but all right go ahead and <laughs> yeah i think a lot of people because the ratings are not so great for anybody but and I hate to admit it, I still watch General Hospital. You do? Yeah. I mean, wow. people say you're so smart. Like, how many times can you see a pregnant woman fall down the stairs or a twin come back, you know, from the dead? Because they always have twins and they always bring people back from the dead. Um, and how come my full screen? I just I put you, I wanted to be everybody to see your full I screen. I don't, <laughs> I don't want people to see all right, me. All right, yourself all right. back. <laughs> I don't want that. I okay. just, I just, but my goodness. No, but right now we're, I, I just recently finished, um, and it, I didn't watch it in real time. And years ago, people said you have to watch Breaking Bad, and yeah. I didn't. And someone gave me a DVD, and I still didn't watch it. And I, now you know how old I am and how there are no DVDs anymore. Anyway, I just watched it, binged it, loved it, then went to Better Call Saul. Yep, loved but it. But now I'm one season behind because I'm, I'm yeah. not watching it on wherever it's really airing so i'm waiting yeah. for this the last season yeah it's on a and e i believe uh is where they they show it but so we had on uh jezebel montero i don't know if you remember her from the metro days she was on and she actually admitted to me she never she tried to watch it uh or didn't didn't particularly care for it there's a lot of things that she you know it's it's funny how some people love that kind of stuff i i, I do um i loved uh, Bre- breaking bad and i watched uh better call saul although i'm behind as well uh, it, it gets to a point where there's, you don't even remember cause it's been on off for like a year and a half and you don't remember, uh, what they do. But, uh, I, uh, was bringing this up cause Cobra Kai is apparently coming back for a fifth season. Oh, uh, I, I watched the first one or two when they threw him off, yeah. the, when the kid got hurt, that's yeah. the last season I saw. I yeah. I, I, I thought I would really be loving this and, and I gotta be honest I, in the beginning, I liked it and I just, I started to watch the second season. And I just went to do something else and I never went back. And I really want to go back and watch it. Cause I loved, you know, Danielson. I was my, right. you know, exactly. um, it was my favorite thing going, growing up, but I, I just, you know, it's, um, and they're having a good time with it. Uh, and they're on season five. Uh, so, uh, September the 9th, they're going to air season five of Cobra Kai. And that is also on Netflix. So okay. it is, uh, you know, the way it is now, you and I were talking off the air a little bit about, working and what we do and all this stuff. Now I have a question for you. At what point is it too many years to work at a company and, and how, like when you retire, like what is a good, good age to retire? Is it, is it 65? Is it 67, 70? What I, mean, I don't know how number? to answer that anymore. I mean, things are so expensive and the I know. cost of inflation is going up and I don't know. I don't well, know. I have a story for you because okay. there was a hundred year old man. Okay. hundred years old. God bless. I don't think I'll ever make it that far. I've got about 46 years to go. And I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to be out before that. But anyway, hundred year old man, he's broken the Guinness book of world records for working at the same company. Forget this 84 years at one company. I mean, he started at 15 years old. Uh, his name is Walter Orthman of Brazil and he broke a record. He, uh, 
He was born uh, in April 19, 1922, and he wanted to get a job as a 15-year-old to help his family with financial problems, so that's good. And because of his strong pro proficiency in German, he was hired as a shipping assistant for the textile company Industrious Renault SA, now known as Renault uh, View, rather, on uh, January of 1938. You know, he's been promoted, he's been this, but he's now been with the company for 84 years, and that, according to Guinness Book of World's Records on January 6th, is the longest career in the same company. That is some dedication right there. That is. I hope they gave him a good going away party. I would hope so, because <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to stay at a company for 84 years or why you want to keep working at the age of 100. But if he's happy, that's all. Because I, I have figured out that with all the things I do, you know, with the additional stuff, I've, I've been trying to ride motorcycles, I'm doing podcasts. I, I'm preparing for life after work, but like you said, I like nice things and I like to, <laughs> things are too expensive at the grocery store. I, uh, I have to work probably till I'm 70, but I, I'm thinking that maybe I'm definitely not working to a hundred. I know that. No, so, no, no, you deserve to enjoy life. My dad worked <laughs> at the same company for his entire career too. I mean, he worked for the New York city, yeah. um, but Started yeah, well, as like a social worker and then worked his way up to, you know, a manager or whatever, but worked for New York City for the same yeah. division the whole, whole, whole time. What, what I find interesting is when, when uh, I was growing up, because I'm certainly a lot older than you are. Oh, um, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> we're just going to say that. Come on. Okay. Work with me here. Sure. Um, anyway, <laughs> when we were growing up, all right, when we were growing up, people want, like, I remember getting a job at the. Bergen Record newspaper in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. When I first got there, I thought I was going to be there my entire career. Like I figured that was the job, right? It was just, you know, and that's the way we were brought up that people would work at the same company forever. And now it's just, you know, people go one, two years, five years, you know, they, they move on. You see everybody, even professional athletes don't stay anymore. Uh, Long-term or the Derek Jeter uh, finished his career with the Yankees, but not many players will do that. Um, yeah. Not many people will do that. What are your thoughts on that? Is there, is well, that? Well, I, I've thought about that recently because I've had, I had called somebody April 27th for their 50th birthday, who also is at one company their entire career. And we were talking about that. And then I brought, I brought up, you know, the people that jump around, when they jump around, they usually land the next job at a higher position. Yeah. You know, and they get themselves a, a, a pretty good raise. Also, each time you get more money, you know, you take your 401k and you take it and then you go invest it elsewhere. So I'm like, maybe they're on to something. I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. It's hard. It, it, yeah, I, I would agree. I think some companies do not take care of their employees and that's why they want to leave. And most people don't leave uh, because they're, you know, because of the job. They leave because of their manager or the way they're treated. Because at the end of the day, I've always said this. So you, you know, as a manager myself, if you treat people with respect and you give them the smallest things, you could give them a, a $25 gift card and they will feel like they're appreciated. I mean, you know, we'd like to have a hundred dollar gift card or a thousand dollars, but at the end of the day, if you get something, a ham at, uh, at Christmas or a Turkey or something to, to make you feel like you're at least part of it, because a lot of companies, they cut out all of that. And then they wonder, why people leave to go for that better job because it doesn't take much. I mean, I remember, you know, if I gave somebody a day off on uh, a Tuesday and they needed just to be with their family, that was, that was enough. And I, if I worked for them and they got the day off, they were happy. I mean, it's just a little things really mean a lot, right? Oh, I agree. If you have a good manager like that, who gave you a Tuesday off or a little yeah. $25 gift certificate, I'd be so excited. Yeah. yeah. I didn't get that. I, mean, <laughs> so I would love that. Love my boss then. Yeah, most of the people. So I this show has been on for 109 episodes. It's 109 weeks in a row that I have done this, which I can't believe that. Um, dedication. But it is dedication, and I just want to do it. And this is I'm sorry that I waited uh, all this time um, to bring you on because uh, you know it's just <laughs> it, it was there was no rhyme or reason as to why I didn't bring you on. But I, I don't have like a set schedule. In my Thanks head. for having me now. Oh, oh, I love it. Anyway, but what I was saying is most of the people that I've had on, I've worked with in some capacity, not everybody, but uh, you and I 
did some work together uh, when I was at Metro and I did some WR work in the day. Um, but I, I remember most of the people that I have on, we talk about the good old days and we talk about how, you know, Metro was great. But then even before that, like when I worked at the record, we would go out after work, like all of us. And we would just have a great time. There are people that I still talk to to this day for companies I work for the company I worked at in, in 1989. I mean, let's be honest, right? That's a long time ago. Uh, but, but it's because of like little things, like we would get food delivered and, and people would just bring, bring stuff. And you'd go to the, we'd go afterwards to the bar, you know, listen to a couple of bands play after work. Every, you know, it was a different time, I guess, but everybody stayed at the company forever. Uh, yeah. And you just felt like it. And eventually, of course, you know, uh, newspapers. I, went I think the way then it was more like family too. Yeah. Like even though we were work coworkers, everyone felt like they were family. And we, you know, became real friends. I don't know if they have that now. Yeah. Now you're just working so hard and you're working, 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 working. And like you said before, with work from home or pandemic, you're always on, you're working yeah. more. Yeah. I, I really believe that. And people say, cause I've been working from home for a very long time. So I've done remote working. Okay. And I've, I've, you know, in sales and stuff, I travel and, and I work from home, but I have found that because everybody else is now working from home, you're supposed, you're expected to be there for them. And you'll, you'll get like, you know, instant messages now, and you'll get emails at, you know, later on in the evening. And I, and I always say like, you know, people, you know, they create their own hours nowadays. Like you don't work, like there's no set schedule. Like I like to, I like to do a little before eight and after five, maybe a little bit, but five, I like to do the old eight to five kind of deal. Right. I'm, I'm old school. Mm -hmm. But what I find now is that you get people that maybe start working at four in the afternoon because they're working a different schedule. And then you got to answer stuff. And that's where it's, it gets to be a little bit much. And that's why you have to turn it off because if you don't, you get to a situation where you're not sleeping very well and you're not uh, getting in and it becomes a, uh, becomes a problem, right? Your health uh, is an issue and, and maybe you're not going to last the 84 years at the company like the other guy did. <laughs> now I saw an article this week, that said, uh, I don't know how many hours a night you sleep, but I, I don't sleep very well. I, I, I get five, five good hours a night and then I wake up and then maybe I go back to bed or whatever. I, I don't always sleep very well, but they say that new research found that seven hours seven. of sleep. Yeah. I saw the, that. Yeah. Is the ideal rest, uh, with insufficient, excessive sleep associated with reduced ability to pay attention. So this has been my problem, right? I don't pay attention, right? So remember and learn new things, solve new problems, make decisions. So seven hours of slumber is what they call, I guess, the perfect, perfect night's sleep. I will tell you this, and I don't know if it's if it's certain times you go to bed. I find if I go to bed too early or too late, it's not good. So if I try to go to bed at like 930, like let's say because I'm an old man, um, then I will wake up at like 130 in the morning and I'll be like wide awake. Mm. Uh, but if I go to bed at like like a sweet spot, like around 10, 15, 10, 30, then I could sleep much better. I don't know why that is. I, ex, explain this to me, Dr. Mara. I don't I, know, I, but I, is, that, I, is that what time you go to bed? Around 1030? I've gone, I've, tr I've tried to go early because I've been tired, but I. But isn't I, that hard with like the family and work and. Well, no? Well, well, no, well now the kids are older, so I can, but it's, um, it, it's a, it's a situation where last night I'm watching the Mets game and the Mets came back with seven runs in the ninth inning. So I went to bed later. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah, I heard yeah. people left because it wasn't at like seven yeah. zero. And then yeah. they missed the, the, the end. I had to call my dad. He absolutely yeah. loves the Mets. So I, I'm yeah, sure yeah. he stayed up to the end. Yeah. And of course, you know, when this episode airs, we are talking about it a day before, but anyway, <laughs> we, it does not matter. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we, uh, the Mets game, I stayed up a little bit later and I found that I slept okay, but I, I wound up waking up still about four or five in the morning. Like I'll wake up a little bit earlier, but I don't, I'm, I don't want to get ready for the day yet at five. So I sometimes we'll go back to bed and that makes it worse. I think, <laughs> right. I need to just kind of get up, stay up. Right. I mean, what is your schedule? Do you have a, a set schedule? Yeah. But I used to always, always my entire career work morning drive and I would get up at one fifteen yeah. or three fifteen AM. Um, just during the pandemic, I've been working middays and while I'm, I'm not as tired and I, you know, I feel better. I kind of miss the mornings because now my afternoons I'm working and I don't have the opportunity to do all the stuff that I really need to do all the errands and stuff, but seven hours is great. 
Like yeah. seven hours I, is just great. I would agree. And as somebody who did work morning drive as well, I always felt that that was a weird schedule. You know, you did like a 3 a.m. I'd get up and, you know, you'd have to, but I would go out sometimes till like 11 o'clock and then still oh, get up. I can't do that now, but, <laughs> but I would do that and I would get up, you know, and, and, and do the shift. But I found by like eight o'clock, I was ready for like a hamburger. I wasn't I ready for breakfast. Right. right. So that's the problem. Exactly. It's like, yeah, you, you, you wanted a meal, like a, like a dinner. I, I, I hear you. I mean, I, I that's, that's the one thing I miss. So, you know, go back to New York. You can eat anything at any time. Okay. Any time of the day. So let's talk about you for a second. Let's talk about what you're doing now. Can uh, I just I had, ask you, did you work with me in the morning at Metro where I probably shouldn't bring it up when, when we were supposed to be working and we were working, but we also had like Yahtzee in the middle of the room? Yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, 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 there was a lot of stuff going on in those days, <laughs> but, but anyway, what do you, you know, I introduced you as a multi, you know, media journalist. Uh, you've done so much work in the radio industry uh i love the picture of you with with the dogs uh, <laughs> we posted it on uh on facebook and instagram so um what what are you doing now and uh you know how can people consume what you're doing or um so i work for the network so i put together the midday newscast from 12 31 p.m eastern to 6 31 p.m eastern um put those together also um a anchor a little bit. I do that mostly Friday night overnights and I report. So, and our, so you could listen obviously on the CBS radio app or our stuff gets fed to our affiliates. So we have a lot of big stations in, um, in cities and towns across the nation, I guess. Yeah. I, I give you credit cause you've been doing, uh, you've been doing news for a little bit. I mean, a, a, a few years, right? And it's it, it's it definitely the news world has changed. I mean, I know Glenn, we've had Glenn Shuck on. Um, he he, you know, obviously worked for Metro days. Now he works for uh, Ten Ten Wins, and in New York. And you know, you're doing CBS, and we've had a lot of people on that have done uh, news around. Uh, I know a former Metro alum, uh, Lisa Romanello, who is Lisa Brady now. She does, uh, I think, Fox too, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Does she still do that? Yes, she does. Yeah, yeah. Do you talk to anybody from the old Metro days? Um, well, Glenn, as you yeah. mentioned him. Yeah. 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 Glenn and everybody. Yeah. That, that, that's half the uh, people that have come on the show. All that's of great. All, like the uh, guests that if you look at the, the list of guests that we've had on uh, for the 109 episodes now of lens burning Bush. Now you could like lens burning Bush on Facebook. Uh, you could also watch it live on Facebook. You're watching it. Uh, the video portion on Facebook at Lens Burning Bush. You can follow along on Twitter uh, at Lens Burning Bush. Also, YouTube channel at Lens Burning Bush uh, and all over the place. We now have a website. Um, so you could, you, I put it on the, the bottom of the uh, YouTube channel, but you can, uh, the website is lensburningbush.com and uh, had this, you know, had it made up and it has uh, all of the episodes actually. So you could actually, instead of listening on all the, the, the different ways you can listen on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play. You can actually go to the website now at lensburningbush.com and all the episodes, all the videos are now there. I don't know how it got done, but it looks pretty good. It I, does I look good. I checked it out and, yeah. and they're all listed. And yeah, I, it, it, it's making things easier. Of course, I don't know what the heck I'm doing, but it, You're it, doing it, a good it, job. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to do this. I just I really uh, I really appreciate you coming on because I think that you know, you said to me, I don't want to come on. I'm boring. You're not boring. You're oh, fun. You're oh, wonderful. Yeah. Everybody's going to love Mara. And you are the second Mara to be on the show. So it's nuts. Now, is your name, like the name Mara is not very popular, I would think. Mm -hmm. um, and Their the parents thought they made it up, which they didn't. And I grew up in Jersey and on my street, there was a Tara, a Dara, and a Mara. And then when we <laughs> would all play, like, you know, in the summer, kickball in the street, and someone would call, like, Tara, I would run home. My mom, like, yeah. I didn't call you. I'm like, yay, I can go back out. And I would go back out. So, yeah. So my other friend who was on the show uh, last year, Mara Golding, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that she complained about, and I, I wonder if you complain about the same thing, that it's not Mara, it's Mara. Yes. Uh, and people will just say it the way they want to say it. And it's kind of like when they hear me say Len, for some reason they hear Glenn. So I get okay. Glenn a lot. And there's a joke about that. We had um, when my kids were playing, my son was playing football. And my daughter was cheering. We were part of a, a, a big team. And we would, uh, you know, 
all the parents would sit in the lawn chairs and watch the football practice. So this woman who her kid was on the same team, she would come up to me and, you know, I told her my name and, you know, and there's a couple people told her my name. And, you know, the next day she comes up to me, Hey Glenn, how you doing? And for a while it just, you know, and I felt like at some point I can't tell her that my name isn't Glenn. Well, so you didn't correct her. You let I did, her go on. I did on. not. I let her go on and, and it went on and it is a joke to this day with these people. Uh, <laughs> so when they, when I wish them a happy birthday, I usually say Glenn w approves this message uh, because good. they uh, they come up to me later. Or they they laugh about it that uh, when they, they felt really bad, um, but I didn't make them. I just said, you know, my name's really Glenn. But it uh, eventually it came out, and uh, it's kind of like hard uh, to ask somebody their name after the fact. Like if, especially if you don't know it. Like if you've hung out with them, what's the what's the uh, like? There was a Seinfeld episode with the uh, Dolores, right? So right, they, right. at certain point, you just can't ask the name. Right. And you try to introduce them and you say, hi, I'm Len. And then they don't you know. wait for them to yeah. introduce themselves. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't work. It Dolores. Doesn't work. Dolores. I can't <laughs> believe it. Mulva. Mulva. <laughs> so, so I'm I'm Glenn and you're Mora. No, Mora. It's Mora. Mora. Mora Tierney. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that, that that who that is? But that's Mara. So the second I, I can't believe I know two Maras. Uh, probably not many people do. Yeah. Look at, Look at you. So thank you so much, Mary. You're, you're a treasure. I'm going to play a little bit of my theme song. Um, and I know that, uh, the band blue jelly, uh, he will be in the rock yeah. and roll hall of fame. Yeah, they should be, uh, blue jelly in Northern Kentucky. They do a great job. Jim Beatenberg. Thank you so much for, for the song. And thanks to Mara Rubin. Thanks to, uh, I, it's so good to have you on. I'm so glad you uh, you got through it. And see, it wasn't so bad. I told you. It wasn't. Listen, you're a great host. <laughs> well, thanks, Mara Rubin and my band Blue Jelly for my theme song. I'm Len Harvey. We'll be back with another episode of Len's Burning Bush next week. So long.